Today we're going to look at more with equations of the circle. We're going to talk about um, some different forms. Before we do that, we need to go back to math too and remember um, we talked about completing the square for our quadratic equations. So, um, and the reason we completed the square for our quadratic equation was so that we could take an equation from standard form ax squared plus bx plus c and um, that allowed us to write it in vertex form. So a times x minus h squared um, plus k. So for this, that is why we learned completing the square along with it helped us also find the exact roots of the equations or the x-intercepts. So if we have this equation right here, x squared minus 4x plus 2, in order to complete the square, the first thing I would do is take the constant to the other side of the equal sign by subtracting it. And that gives us x squared minus 4x equals negative 2. Then we add our blanks in. And remember, for the blanks, you're going to be adding the same value to both sides, because what you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. And so the question is, what is that value we're going to be adding? So if we think about our quadratic equation um, for this case, if the a value is equal to 1, then you can just take half the linear term and square it. So I, I, you're going to hear me say half the linear term squared. So what is my linear term? Of course, the b. So b divided by 2 squared would be half the linear term squared. If the a value is not equal to 1, um, then you're going to have to factor out a first and then complete the square. But we're going to really focus on just the ones with um, a coefficient of 1 in front for right now. So for um, this, if I look, I can see that my linear term is negative 4. So if I complete the square for this one, I would get um, negative 4 divided by 2 squared, half my linear term squared. So half of negative 4 is negative 2, and negative 2 squared gives us 4. So notice that we are adding 4 to both sides of our equation right there. So once I do that, then that gives me my new equation, x squared minus 4x plus 4. And this allows us to then be able to factor that equation, because it's helping us complete the square. So this would be factors of 4 that add up to negative 4 are always going to be half the linear term. So half the linear term was negative 2. So x minus 2, x minus 2, which is x minus 2 quantity squared that completed the square equals 2. So that gives us um, our equation. And if I wanted to find the roots for this equation, I could, would solve for x. But we're going to go ahead and skip that since we want to look at um, circles. So looking at um, the first two equations, we're going to practice completing the square first. So looking at the first problem, again, the step one would be to take the constant to the other side. So I'm going to subtract the 18. Once I do that, I get x squared plus 12x. And I like to put the blanks in. So plus blank equals negative 18 plus blank. So we have to figure out what that goes in that blank. So that's half your linear term squared. So my linear term is 12. So half of 12 squared would give me 6 squared, which of course is equal to 36. So that means I'm going to add 36 to both sides of my equation. So now I have x squared plus 12x plus 36 is equal to, and negative 18 plus 36 is 18. Once I have that, now I can go ahead and factor my new equation. So when I factor my new equation, factors of 36 that add up to 12 would be 6 and 6. So x plus 6, x plus 6. Notice that that number that it factors into is half my linear term. That will always be the case. So that equals 18. So when we rewrite our equation, we get x plus 6 squared equals 18. And so remember, this allowed us to put it, like I said, in our um, vertex form. So for this, this would be y equals x plus 6 squared 
minus 18, if you recall from last year. And again, the re reason we did that because then we could find the vertex, which is at negative six and negative 18. Because remember, we said that our equation is always x minus h plus k. So if it's minus h, but it's not here, this is plus six to get that, it would, means we would be um, moving our equation to the left six and down 18. So we're going to leave our answer like this because it didn't tell us to put it in vertex form or to solve. We're just completing the square. So why don't you guys go ahead and do number eight on your own. When you're done, you can unpause the video and check your work. So step one, subtract the 57 to the other side. So then I get x squared minus 18x plus blank equals negative 57 plus blank. So now I need to um, find the number that completes my square. So half my linear term squared. So that would be negative 9 squared, which gives us 81. So we're adding 81 to both sides. And when I do that, I get x squared minus 18x plus 81 is equal to negative 57 plus 81 is 24. And now I can go ahead and factor my equation on the left side. So we want factors of 81 that add up to 18. So that's x minus 9 times x minus 9. Again, notice that that number is always half your linear term equals 24 and now we can write that as x minus 9 quantity squared equals 24. So of course if I wanted to find the vertex form it would be y equals x minus 9 squared minus 24 and then the vertex of this parabola would actually be at 9 negative 24. All right so now that we've got that let's go ahead and look at the next part. So for this next part, it says Malik wrote the equation of a circle formed by one of his sprinklers. And just because he likes messing with the algebra, he did this. So here was our original equation. So how did he go from this step to this step? He just foiled and combined like terms. The x minus 3 squared would be x minus 3 times x minus 3 and y plus 2 times y plus 2. And then he combined like terms and put it in standard form, it looks like. So it says Malik thought that's pretty cool. It's like a different form of the equation. I got, I guess there could be different forms of the equation of a circle, like there are different forms of equation for a parabola or a line. He showed his equation to his sister, Susanna, and she thought he was nuts. <laughs> Susanna said, that's crazy equation. I can't even tell where the center or the length of the radius is anymore. Malik thought it, a good challenge would be to give Susanna um, a an equation in this new form and have her find the center. So he gave her the following equations in expanded form, help Susanna write the equation of the circle in standard form, find the center of each circle and determine the length of the radius. So um, this is of course the expanded form, which we just called general form. So that's the general form of a circle. And we know that the standard form, of course, talked about that the other day is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So that was the first form that we started with. So we're going to be given our general equation, seeing if we can put this into standard form. So remember for circles, we have an x squared and a y squared. So that actually means we're going to have to complete our square more than once. And so the first thing you should do is get your x terms together. So notice we have our x's here. Then I also want to get my y terms together. And anything that doesn't have an x or y, your constant is going to go to the other side. So let's go ahead and do that first and write it in that correct order. So we would get x squared minus 4x and then plus y squared plus 10y, and then we have that plus 20 equals zero. So that means then, again, we're gonna take the 20 to the other side and we're gonna put 
not just one blank, but we're going to have to have one, two, three, four blanks, two on each side. So let's go ahead and do that. We have x squared minus 4x plus blank. And then we get plus y squared plus 10y plus blank. We took the 20 to the other side by subtracting it, so minus 20. So we have to add a blank for the x's that we complete the square on, and we also have to add a blank for the y's when we complete the square. So let's go ahead and look at our x's first. So our linear term is negative 4. So half of negative 4 would be negative 2 squared. So this gives us negative 2 squared, which of course we know is equal to 4. So that means that the number that completes the square for the x's is 4. So we have to add that to both sides. And now we can go ahead and do the y's. So if I do the y's, my linear term is positive 10. So half of 10 squared would be 5 squared, which is 25. So that means the number we're adding is 25 to both sides. Now that I have completed the square for my x's and the y's, I can go ahead and factor. So if I look at this first one, we want factors of 4 that add up to negative 4. So x minus 2 times x minus 2, which makes sense because notice that was half the linear term. Plus, now we're going to factor our y's. Factors of 25 that add up to 10 should be x plus 5 times x plus 5. Again, notice that that's half my linear term. And that is equal to negative 20 plus 4 plus 25, which would give us 9. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and write this in our standard form. So the x minus 2 quantity squared would be first plus x plus 5 quantity squared is equal to 9. So this is the standard form of our equation. And now we can find the center and the radius. So that means that the center, of course, remember it's hk, so that would be 2 comma negative 5. And the radius, remember that it, um, for the equation, we go back up here, it's r squared, so that means that r squared equals 9, so that means that r is equal to plus or minus the square root of 9, but of course we're only using the positive value, so that means that r is equal to 3. So that was the first equation. So why don't you go ahead and see if you can do number four on your own, pause the video. When you're done on, pause the video and we will check your work. So same thing, we want to put the x terms together and we're gonna put the y terms together and the term that does not have an x or y, which is the constant, it's going to go the other side. And I just noticed that this says plus here, that should be equal to zero. Um, so you just go ahead and fix that. So we're going to then go ahead and write our equation. We get x squared plus 6x plus blank. And then we have plus y squared minus 14y plus blank. And that is going to be equal to, we have negative 2 for a constant, so to put that on the other side, we have to add it, so it's going to be positive 2. And we have to add the x completed the square number and the y to this side. So now we can go ahead and complete our square. So if we start with our x's, notice the linear term is 6. So half of 6 squared would be 3 squared, which is 9, so we are going to add 9 to both sides. And now we can do um, our y term, which is negative 14 for the linear term. So half the linear term squared would give us negative 7 squared, which is, of course, 49. So that means we are adding 49 to each side. 
and notice that I always write down what half the linear term is because that helps me with my factoring. So if I want factors of nine that add up to six, I know that it should be three positive three, so plus three and three. So x plus three times x plus three would give me um, factors of the nine that when you add them together, give me the six plus, and then this one, notice half the linear term was negative seven. So factors of 49 that add to negative 14 are y minus seven times y minus seven. And that is equal to two plus nine plus 49, which is 60. So this becomes x plus three quantity squared. And this would be plus y minus seven squared is equal to 60. So this is the standard form equation for a circle from general form. And now I can go ahead and find the center. So the center of my circle would be negative three and seven. And then the radius. So r squared equals 60. So I'm gonna have to take the square root of 60. Again, we're not using the negative. We can only have a positive radius value. So that we're using the positive only. So the square root of 60, let's go ahead and break that down to figure out what it simplifies into because we always want the exact answer. So we get um, four times 15, four breaks down into two times two, 15 breaks down into three times five. So you can see that the only group of two that we have is two. So that means two goes on the outside and three times five, which of course is 15, stays underneath the radical. So the radius is equal to two square root of 15. All right, so we have one more problem. So go ahead and pause the video and do this next problem on your own. When you're done, you can unpause to check your work. So go ahead and put your x's together. So we have x squared plus 12x plus blank. And then we're gonna do the y's. So plus y squared plus six y plus blank. Um, is equal to, we have to add the 59 to the other side, so this becomes positive 59 plus blank plus blank. So we're going to have to complete the square for the x's, so half of 12 divided by, so 12 divided by 2 squared, so half 12 would be 6, and 6 squared is 36, so we are adding 36 on both sides. And then for the y's, we know our linear term is 6. So half of 6 squared gives us 3 squared, which is 9. And now I can go ahead and factor. So this should factor into x plus 6 times x plus 6. Oops. And the next one we know factors into y plus 3 times y plus 3. And that is equal to 59 plus 36 plus 9 is 104. And so we get x plus 6 squared plus y plus 3 squared equals 104. That is the standard form of the circle. And now the center of course, would be at negative 6, negative 3, and the radius is going to be r squared equals 104, so r is equal to the square root of 104, so when we break that down, we get 4 times 26, and then that breaks down into 2 times 2, and that breaks down into 2 times 13, so we have one group of two twos, so that would be two times the square root of 26. So r equals two root 26 for the radius. And that is all for um, completing the square with circles.